container and the second shipment how to play to set up the game you'll lay out the island board and then you'll create the supply of cargo containers in the five colors based on the number of players so if you're playing with all five players you'll use all 20 containers in each color if you're four players you'll use 16 containers in each color or, or you'll take away four from each. If you're three players you will use 12 of each container or remove eight. I'm going to cover the rules for the base game and then afterwards I'll cover the different modules for the second shipment. Each player will start with a ship and it's starting out in sea versus the island or versus their player board. Every player will start with 20 money cards in their hand. Every player will start with a starting warehouse. It goes on that spot. And then all players will receive a random starting machine. It's a factory machine and it has to be different from all other players. So randomly assign each player, in this example a three player game, a different random starting machine. It'll go on that spot and then for the machine that they were given give them the matching container in that color and place it on the two value. And then finally all players will receive a secret container value card. These will be for this player the values that these containers will be worth at the end of the game. And so for this player, the dark brown one is the most valuable at 10, where here it's the light brown. The one with the dual symbol indicates that if you are able to get one of every color onto your island spot at the end of the game, you're eligible to score the higher value for this container. If you're not able to get one of every color, you're going to score the lower value. The object of the game is to earn the most money at the end of the game by manipulating and doing the best in terms of producing, buying and selling, shipping and auctioning containers. The number of containers in the game serve as the game's timer once two of these colors have completely run out, that will trigger the end of the game. The player that triggered it will complete their turn, and then you'll go to final scoring. Uh, the winner will be the one with the most money, and players will earn additional money based on the number of containers they have on the island, based on their secret scoring card. They will also earn money for any containers remaining on their ship, in their harbor store, or their factory store. They will also be required to repay any loans at that point, and the player with the most money will win the game. We'll cover the exact scoring after we cover uh, the different turn structure. Alright, so the first thing we'll cover is money. All money is kept secret in the game, your money cards. At any point uh, during your turn, a player's turn, they can take a loan from the bank. This is a loan card. It'll represent that you've taken a loan from the bank. A loan will get you an additional $10 from the bank that you'll add to your money. And at the start of every subsequent turn, you'll have to pay interest to the bank equal to $1 for each outstanding loan. And you're ever only allowed to have two maximum loans at any time. So if you had two loans, you'd have to pay $2 of interest to the bank at the start of each turn. If at the start of your turn you're unable to pay interest, um, bad things will happen, so try not to let that happen. For each unpaid uh, interest, the bank will first repossess one of your containers from the island. If you don't have any containers on the island, it will repossess two of your containers on your player board starting with any in your harbor store. It'll try to get two from here 
it'll get two total, but starting here and then it'll go to your factory store. If you only have one container on your player board, it will take that one container and consider that payment for the interest that turn. If you've got no container on the island and then you don't have any containers on your player board, it will repossess one of your warehouses or one of your factory machines. Um, except it will not take your starting or the one on the next one. So it won't take this one or the four or this one or the six. But if you had one here, here, or here, or here, or here, it would repossess it. If the bank does repossess a warehouse or a factory, that is considered repaying the loan. And so you could return this to the bank at this point. All decisions about which containers get repossessed or which factory or warehouse gets repossessed, if it comes to that, are made by the player to your right. The final point on paying interest each turn is that if containers do get repossessed or seized, those containers get returned to the box. They don't get returned to the supply because that would affect the game's timer. They just get removed from play. In terms of repaying a loan, you can repay a loan at any point during your turn as long as you've paid the interest on that turn. So your turn always starts by paying the $1 of interest. At that point, if you wanted to pay the $10 to repay it, you could do that and return uh, the loan card. The one, the one thing to keep in mind is, we'll talk about this later, um, if you've triggered an island auction, that will end your turn so you wouldn't be able to uh, repay a loan after that. But otherwise, at any point during your turn before it ends, you can repay a loan as long as you've paid your dollar of interest that turn. So on your turn, uh, the first thing you'll do is pay any interest for any outstanding loans, and then you'll take two actions. Uh, one of the actions you can do is to buy a new machine for your factory. And this is the amount you would pay for that machine. So the next machine here would cost $6 uh, paid to the bank to add a new machine there. Now you can, you're not allowed to have two machines of the same color, so you would have to select uh, one of the different colors from the supply. In addition, the number of machines that you have uh, dictate your total amount of capacity, storage capacity for containers. For every machine, you can store two containers anywhere in your factory store. So with only having one machine here, I could only have one additional container in addition to this one. If I added another machine, I would have two and two for total capacity. I could store four containers uh, anywhere in my factory store. Another action you can take on your turn is to build another warehouse. The next warehouse you build will cost four, five, six, and seven, respectively. The number of warehouses that you have um, control the maximum capacity of containers in your harbor store. This is your harbor store. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio for, for, for warehouses. So one warehouse allows me to store one container anywhere in my harbor store, and then for each additional warehouse that I build, I can store one additional container. So if I had three warehouses, three maximum capacity of containers. Another action you can choose on your turn is to produce with your machines. Uh, producing costs one action and it also costs one dollar that you have to pay to the player to your right. Uh, it's called paying the union boss a dollar. So regardless of how many factories you have, um, it only takes one action and one dollar to take the produce action. Each machine, or factory, each machine will produce one container, assuming you can have, you have enough storage capacity in your factory store. So if you don't have enough storage, you can't produce it. In this example, I've got one white machine, and I have enough capacity to create it, so I would get one additional white container and at that point I could decide where to price it. Now when I take the production action and I'm deciding where to price, I'm also allowed to change the price 
for other goods or other containers in my factory store. And since I have one machine, I have two capacity here. Here's another example. So I've got two machines. So I have a total of four capacity, but if I take the production action, I would produce one white and one black, but I only have room for one. So I can make the decision. I may decide to produce a, an additional white or a black. Let's say in this one, I produce a black, and then I could decide how to price them in my factory store. Two other things on the produce action. Although it only takes one action, you can only produce once on your turn. You couldn't use both actions to produce, then produce again. Also keep in mind that when you produce, you are depleting containers because you're taking containers from the supply that you may trigger uh, the end of the game if two of one color have been depleted. And if finally, if you want to produce and a container has already been depleted and the game isn't over yet, uh, you're unable to obviously produce. So if you have an orange machine and all the orange have been gone, then you won't get a orange container. Another action you can take on your turn is to buy containers for your harbor store. And that's the only way you can get containers in your harbor store is to purchase them from another player's factory store. One of the important concepts of the game is you cannot directly purchase your own goods. So I could not buy this from my factory store. Other players could, but not me. That's why these numbers are away from me and facing the other players where these numbers are facing me because these are the amounts I would pay. So on my turn, I could buy from another player's factory store and put them in my harbor store. So I could decide with one action, you can purchase from one player as many containers as you'd like from that player. So I can decide just to purchase this one tan for one, the orange for two, or I can purchase both for three. So I'd give that player the three dollars, and then I'd place these in my harbor store and set the price that I'd like. But you can see there's a problem. I only have one warehouse, so I only have one capacity in this harbor store, so I could not purchase both those. So I may decide to just purchase the orange for two, and then I could price it however I like. I bought it for two, so I want to make a small profit when it gets sold, so I'll set the price for three. In this example, I already have three warehouses, so I can store three containers in my harbor store, and so I'll decide to purchase from this player, pay the three, and now I can price these wherever I want. And when I'm taking the action, that also allows me to price any other containers I may have had there. You're not allowed to freely reprice goods or containers in your harbor store or your factory store unless you've taken the action that lets you add containers to these. So I can decide to reprice those along with the new containers that I've brought in Additionally, you may decide to use the action to simply reprice containers in your harbor store without having to buy from another player. But that would take a whole action to do that. The ability to reprice comes as a bonus uh, for purchasing. Now, if I also wanted to purchase from another player's factory store, that would cost an additional action. It's one action uh, to purchase containers from a single player, but you can buy as many containers from them as you'd like by paying the price, assuming you have enough storage. The final point about purchasing containers for your harbor store is other players can never refuse you. So if this player had, in a prior move, set this price at one and you want to buy it, uh, they cannot prevent you from doing that. The final action I can do on a turn is to move my ship. If it's at sea, it will cost one action to move to another player's harbor store. Once I land at a harbor store, as part of that continuing action, I can buy as many goods as I'd like from their harbor store. So I can buy both of these, pay $7, and load those onto my cargo ship. The cargo ship has a maximum capacity of five containers. I can buy as many as I like and can fit 
in my ship when I've docked. If on the next player's turn, they buy factory goods from another player and they restock their harbor store, when it gets back to me, I would have to use another action if I wanted to pick these up and load them onto my ship and pay the cost. Uh, buying from the harbor store is only a bonus action if I'm landing on here. If I'm already docked, it would take an action to take these and then another action to move the ship out to sea. So maybe I'll decide it's a brand new turn. I'll use one action to load these up. I'm still not at capacity. And then I use my second action to go out to sea. As we talked about before, players cannot refuse the sale. Also, you can never dock at your own harbor and purchase your own harbor store goods. Once the ship moves out to sea as an action, uh, nothing further happens. It would take another action to dock this ship at another player's harbor store or to move it to the main island. If you take the action to dock at the main island, regardless if that was your first action, it will end your turn. Um, so typically you'd want to do that as your second action so you don't waste a turn because docking at the main island will always end your turn after the auction. Um, so by docking at the main port, you're going to trigger an auction for all containers on the ship. If there was only one container, it'd be an auction for that. If all five slots were filled, it's an auction for all five. In this example, all four of these containers are going up for auction. All other players are allowed to bid for this container group. You are not allowed to bid because it's your ship that docked here. So all other players will decide secretly, using their money cards, how much they want to bid. Uh, they'll hold those out and then simultaneously reveal those. Now remember, at any point, a, loan, a player can get a loan. So they may decide to get a loan to get some extra money for the auction or you may decide to get some money in case you decide to buy these um, to match a bid, and we'll talk about that. So all players will simultaneously reveal their bid. If there is a tie, all players will bid again and reveal their cards in terms of what they're adding to their overall bid. Bids of zero um, in the initial bid and the subsequent bid are both legal. If on the second bid they're still tied, the player who's docked their ship in will decide which player um, to possibly purchase the goods or sell the goods to. So once players have revealed their secret bids, the player with the ship has a decision to make. They can accept the highest bid. So in this case, this player bid five, they weren't the highest. This bid player bid 10. So they can accept $10 from that player in exchange for all the containers, they would also receive a matching subsidy from the bank. So the bank would also match the highest bid. So this player would get the bid plus the matching subsidy. The winning player for the bid would take all the containers that they won and add them to their island spot. If the ship, the player decides this bid isn't high enough and they choose to reject the bid, then they, from their own money supply, would have to pay the $10. If that's the case, they would basically say, I'm rejecting that offer. The player would get their money back and this player would pay the $10 directly to the bank and then they would get all the containers moved to their island spot. And as we talked about at the end Remember, triggering an auction ends your turn, so after you may have collected money for an auction, you're not allowed to repay loans at that point. You'd have to wait for your next turn to pay the interest and repay the loan. So on your turn, you get to take two actions. Uh, one of those actions can be passing, if you choose, and then play will proceed clockwise uh, until the end game condition is triggered once two of the colors have been depleted. One last point before final scoring is to take your ship and move it off the island and put it into open sea would be one action and then you could move it from there. So at the end of the game, uh, the first thing you're going to do is all players are going to reveal 
their secret cards, and then you'll determine whether you're eligible for the higher amount for one of your containers. Remember, you've got to have one of every color. So in this example, I don't have one of every color, so my white containers would only be worth uh, $5 each at the end of the game. The second thing that happens is all players are forced to discard individually the number of containers that they have the most of. So in this case, I have the most orange containers, so I am forced to discard those, and those will not be scored in this game. If there was a tie for the number of containers you had the most of, uh, normally it's your choice of which one you'd want to discard, except if the tie involved the double value container. If white was tied for the highest number of containers for this card, then I'd be forced to discard the white. Otherwise, I would choose which of the highest to discard. Once all players have discarded uh, their highest value container, they'll receive money from the bank equal to the value on their card times the number of containers. So in this example, I had to discard the orange since they were my highest. I have one tan and one brown. The tan would get me 10 from the bank and the brown would get me 4. You'll also get some money for any remaining cargo containers. For each cargo container left on your ship, you'll get $3 per container. For any container left in your harbor store, you'll get $2. And unfortunately, any containers left in your factory store do not score any. Also, you'll need to repay any loan amounts, any loan cards. Uh, the, you'll pay the, repay the $10 for the loan plus a $1 of interest. So each loan card would need $11 from your money supply repaid to the bank. At that point, all players uh, would add up all their money, and most money wins the game. So again, a reminder, the game will end when two of these have been depleted. That player will finish their turn, and then we'll go through the final scoring that we just described. Most money wins the game. And that's everything you need to play the base game of Container. All right, let's play Container the Second Shipment. So the expansion for container includes four different modules that can be added based on player preference. The first one I'm going to cover is called the pricing restrictions. So for setup, each player is going to get a set of harbor, or I'm sorry, warehouse cards and factory or machine cards. Uh, there's five warehouse cards corresponding to the five warehouses and there's four machine cards corresponding to the four spots where you can build a machine. Basically the idea is that as players increase their infrastructure and buy more machines and warehouses, they increase their economies of scale, which allows them to offer lower prices to their customers. So you'll sort these in ascending order with one on top indicating that this is the current condition, since all players start with a warehouse and a machine. And basically what will happen is as you build additional warehouses or machines, you'll advance to the next card. So once you build your second machine, now these are the new restrictions in play. So what do the, what do the color codings mean? The text is just flavor text, you can ignore that. Basically, these four spots refer to the four spots of machines. So while card one is active, I'm sorry, it refers to these four spots in your factory store. So if you only have one machine built, you are not allowed to price any goods at the one level. And you can only have one container priced at the two level. The green means no restrictions. You can have as many as you want priced at three and as many as you want priced at four. Obviously, you still have to conform to the capacity limitations based on how many machines you have. And the same thing goes for the warehouses. You have five cards. So as you build, once you build your fifth warehouse, 
you'll be on this card where you have no pricing restrictions. You can price containers however you see fit. But to start the game, card one is you are not allowed to price any containers at the two or the three spot. Card two, you can allow have one there. Card three, you can have one each in the lowest spots, no restrictions on the other ones. And you can see the restrictions get less and less as you build more infrastructure. And again, these cards do not affect the total capacity of containers that you can store. That's based on the number of warehouses and number of the machines. This only dictates how many can be how many containers can be set at the different price levels. The more infrastructure you build, the more your ability to price things at lower at lower price points. The next module is the monopoly uh, module. It basically lifts the restrictions where in the base game you could ever only have one machine in each of the colors. Here you can have multiple machines in each of the colors. So if you wanted to, you could have multiple white machine in your factory or multiple orange. Uh, one setup change now is we're going to limit the number of machines in the game before there was always available to, for each player to have one of every color. Now we're going to take the number of players minus one. So in this example, it's a three player game, so only two machines in each color will be available. So these will get taken out of the game, and in a three-player game, three minus one is two, only two of each machine are now eligible to be purchased throughout the game. And then setup would start as normal. You would randomly give each player a starting machine of a different type, like normal. So besides that, all other normal rules apply. You still get your starting container based on your uh, randomly assigned machine in the two spot. And then now the supply for future machines is limited. But if this player wanted to get that last black machine and basically get a monopoly on the black containers, they're now allowed to do that using this module of the expansion. The next expansion is called the Financier where now player loans are available in the game. So as part of setup, give each player their color of the three loans that they can extend during the game, and that's the maximum number of loans they can extend in the game. Uh, normal loan rules apply in terms of each player can only take a maximum of two loans, but players can now extend up to three, and they're the financiers of debt in the game. So what happens is whenever a player uh, wants to take a loan, they declare their intent to take a loan. In the base game, they would just take one from the bank. In the expansion, players, all other players, can offer to finance that loan. So any player that would like to finance would declare that they'd like to offer a loan, and then several things could happen. Uh, the first thing that might happen, a player declares that they want a loan, and no other players uh, offer them one. So in that case, you would just follow the rules of the base game. You would take a loan card from the bank along with the $10 and place it in front of you. You would just get a loan from the bank. If one other player is willing to offer you a loan, uh, your choice is to either accept their offer for the loan. So let's say I offer this player a loan they can choose it. They take my loan card along with the $10 from me, from my stack. I would give them to their money supply. Or they can choose to decline the loan, but basically they'd be declining a loan altogether for this round. They could not decline my loan and then take one from the bank. If another player is offering you a loan and you want to take it, um, you're, you must take their loan or you have to decline loans altogether for that turn. The third thing that could happen is a player, let's say in this example, Red would like to take a loan and two or more players offer to finance uh, the debt for them. So what would happen is, let's say 
yellow and blue are both willing to offer red alone, now they're going to make a second bid, it's called an incentive bid, um, for red to take their loan. So in secret, they'll pick one of their money cards and they'll secretly reveal it as their incentive bid. So let's say in this example, yellow said it'll offer an incentive of two and blue decided I'm not gonna offer any additional incentive. So what would happen is, just like in the other example, red, if they want a loan, must now take the yellow's offer or decline a loan altogether for the turn. They can't take a bank loan. What'll happen is, yellow will now provide the loan amount, 10, plus the incentive amount, two, so they'll send $12 over to the red player along with the yellow loan card. So the red player accepts the yellow player's loan, they take the loan card, they'll take the $10 loan amount plus the $2 incentive amount, add it to their money supply. Now we'll need to mark how much that incentive was for because the full amount needs to be repaid. The expansion came with some additional money cards, so you'll just mark that the yellow player, in addition to the $10 base loan amount, also provided a $2 incentive loan. This is just used as a marker, so make sure it doesn't get mistaken for anybody's money. So now the full loan to be repaid is $12. And then now what will happen is, at the start of Red's turn, they will have to pay the $1 of interest to the yellow player until the loan has been repaid. The nice thing about getting incentive amounts is regardless of the total loan amount, the, the lending, uh, I'm sorry, the player that got the loan still only always has to pay just $1 of interest. So even if this was a $20 loan, maybe there was a $10 incentive, it's still only $1 of interest to the yellow player each turn. If a player cannot pay the interest on a turn, the lender has an option. They can decide to seize any container that the player has from their harbor store, their factory store, or even their island, seize it and immediately place it in their island spot. Or they may decide to seize a factory or a machine from the player and immediately place it on their board. In either case, if they decide to take a container and place it on their island, or they, if they decide to take a warehouse or a machine and place it on their player board, the loan is considered repaid, and the loan card is returned uh, to the lending player, and this can get discarded. The only restriction on seizing a warehouse or a factory is you cannot take the player's last warehouse or factory. You'll remember the bank is a little kinder. They don't take this one or this one, this one or this one. A player lender is only restricted that they cannot take the last warehouse or the last machine from the player. If a player can't pay interest, has no containers anywhere, and is down to their last warehouse or factory, then the lender is forced to extend one turn of grace period where no interest has to be paid and then next turn uh, repeat the procedure, either allowing the player to pay their interest or go through the seizing of either a container, a warehouse, or a machine. At the end of the game, when you're doing your final scoring, all loans have to be repaid as normal, along with the $1 of interest at the end. So this blue player, if it was a base loan, would get $11 back. If the player could not pay the full amount, um, the bank would pay the lenders any difference. Again, the normal loan limits apply. A player can only get a maximum of two loans in a game, a combination from bank loans or loans from other players. The final module of the expansion are the luxury containers. These are the gold containers. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add the gold containers to the supply. They follow the normal setup rules. So in a five player game, we'll use all 20. In a four player game, we'll use 16. And in a three player game, we'll use 12. And then we also, since there's gold containers in the game, 
will replace all the secret container value cards with the ones that now contain a value for the gold containers. Basically, at the end of the game, you'll take the number of containers you've collected, multiply that by two, and then multiply that by all your gold containers. So, for example, if I collected three containers, it would be three times two. They'd each be worth six times my three containers. I'd get 18 total money from the bank at the end of the game. So to create a gold container, it's a pre-turn action. You do it before you take uh, your two normal actions. And then what happens is basically you're going to convert two different colored containers into one gold container. So in this example, I can take this white and this black, discard them back to the supply. They're going to stay in the game. So they could potentially extend the game timer a little bit. And then you would take a gold container. These go to the supply. Take a gold container, and then you could decide where to price it. Let's say you also maybe had a orange down here, and you decided to discard these for the gold container. You decide where to price it. You're not allowed to reprice this. That would have to be taken during a normal action. You're only allowed to price the new gold container that just came in. Keep in mind, too, they have to be different colored containers. So I could not take two blacks or two whites or two oranges and convert them into a gold. They have to be different colors. And they have to be from the same store. I cannot take a white from the factory store and an orange from the harbor store to create a gold container. They have to be two different containers from the same store, and that's actually where the gold gets placed. So if I wanted to get a gold container in my harbor store, I would have to take two different colored goods from my harbor store, return those to the supply, and then I would get a gold and I could set the price here. There's a limit on the number of gold containers you can have. You can only ever have a maximum of one in either your harbor store or in both your harbor store and your factory store. So since I have a gold container here in this example in my harbor store, I could not convert these into a second gold container since I already have one. However, here I could convert this orange and white, return it to the supply, and get a gold container in my factory store. You can have a maximum of one in your factory and one in your harbor store. You can never convert any goods, or I'm sorry, containers on ships or any containers on the island, and you can never unconvert gold back into uh, the regular containers. Another thing to keep in mind is that if gold gets depleted from the supply, it does count as a possible end game trigger. It would count as one of the two uh, containers that would need to get two different colored containers that would need to get depleted to trigger the end game. So monitor the depletion of the gold bars. Also, for the end game, end game scoring, uh, gold is not required as a unique color in order to score your 5 or 10 container. So if you still had a brown, orange, tan, white, and black, one each of those, you would be eligible for that. You do not also need a at least one unit of a gold. Also, um, potentially, your gold bars could be discarded if they were the most of the highest number of containers you had on your section of the island. In fact, if gold is tied for the most, gold actually gets is required to be discarded first, even before the 510 value card. So if gold and these two were tied, gold would get discarded first. If And then the normal tied rules would apply. It would be based on the player's decision. Gold gets discarded first if it's tied, then this one, then it's the player's choice. And as we talked about, the value of gold is actually based on the number of bars you've collected. You take the number of bars, multiply it by two, that's the base value of gold. Then you multiply it by the number of gold bars that you have. One other rare situation that applies to both the expansion and the base game, actually, is if you only have one color on the island, um, obviously it's the container you have the most of, so you would normally discard it. In fact, if there's two or more, you discard it. There's a special exception is if you only have one container of one color, you can actually score 
that one container. Otherwise, if it's more than just one, it would be your highest value and you would have to discard it. But that's everything you need to set up and play container the second shipment.